So here's your model uh, in the state that I imported it into ZW3D. Uh, it was a stat file. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure I remember what I did in the Fusion 360 file, but I rolled it back to a state where I could just import this flat net structure and the head model. And when you import it in ZW3D, it imports as an assembly. So you have the head dummy component and the net array component. So that's a that's the assembly structure. And if you click on this here, this is there's a timeline for that specifically for that assembly. And if you double click on a component that activates the component, and then there is a timeline that's specific only to that component. And the first thing I want to do is actually heal the geometry. That means this is a very complex geometry and um, ZW3D has a very sophisticated kernel that can repair geometry, can analyze geometry, and uh, it can also fix geometry, like if there are gaps in between these two phases. Um, that's not something that exists in Fusion 360. It exists to a degree in SolidWorks and other software. Um, so I'm going to simply go into the Heal tab, click on Heal, select my shape here, and this already was pre-selected from previous use and I'm just going to accept this and see what the tool comes back with. All right, so it, it repaired a few things, analyzed this model, it, it's okay now. So then the next thing is this this shape here is this in this faded green, uh, semi-transparent on, that means it's in a different component. And <clears throat> ZW3 also has, a, has an isolate function now, by accident, I clicked on the middle mouse button on my scroll wheel, and when you do that, you bring up the last used comment. comment uh, sorry, command. It's very helpful. You can also see that here is uh, the help function that comes up automatically. You can also click this, uh, close it to get more screen surface. But if you want help for a specific tool, you can click here and see the documentation for this. Now, that particular documentation is actually not too bad. Analyze part topology. Um, but for powerful tools such as the wrap tool that we're going to use in a moment, it's actually not really very helpful. It's not very specific or detailed. Anyway, so this is in a different component, so I want to reference that into this component. And I'm going to go into the assembly tab for that, click on reference, and here you have options that you can pick, whether you want a complete shape or just a curve or what is this? Come on. Give me the tool help. Come on. Doesn't want to do it. Either way, I just want the shape right now. And in this case, I want an associative copy. That means if I change the geometry in the actual component, it'll update here in the reference, but I can also unclick it. Then it's just basically a dumb copy of geometry. Anyway, okay. And then the next thing is I isolate this. So I just have the, I just see the geometry that is in this in this um, in the head dummy component and when we go to the shape tab and click on the wrap to faces tool we'll see that we need a datum so then the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I think I can actually do that while the tool is open datum I can click down here and say insert datum and it allows me to insert a datum right from the tool that is very nice so I have it snapped to the middle of this edge here, which is sort of the center edge of this structure. And I want it oriented flush with the bottom surface of that uh, net structure, okay? So now I have my datum, that's already selected here. And the geometry is obviously this entire shape. The faces that I wanna map this on is this face and that face. And ZW3 slows down a little. This is computationally very intense and you can already see that this appears here. It snaps to the middle and it snaps into an orientation that's not really what we want. So we have to define the horizontal and depending on how you define that, if you design, define the, uh, the X direction, for example, and click back into the origin field, then you see it's oriented correctly. So if you click the Y direction back into the origin field, then you see it's uh, rotated 90 degrees. Like, let's just do that. Why not? Right, it's just a demo. So I'm just going to click this here, 
rotate this approximately into the top view, hit the F9 key, and let's basically look at flat at the model. I'm going to click back into the origin so I can reposition this, and I'm just going to have it snap about here. Okay, I can adjust the scale, and this looks okay to me, and I click on OK, and there is our geometry mapped very nicely to this head. And the result is actually not very different from what you have in Fusion 360, with the notable exception that it is about 10 times less time that it takes to do that, or more, or less, actually. But it also shows distortion, uh, which is natural for this sort of mapping operation. So, for example, this edge um, might still be the original length, but this one definitely isn't, and, and that's visible. So if, if that's not what you want, you'd have to probably come up with a different technique. But this is how you do that in ZW3D.